Thank you everyone for joining us here for our monthly value of VV accreditation presentation. It's something we do every month to try and do a better job of outreaching to our new ABs as well as potential new uh, businesses that are looking to get involved with the Better Business Bureau and what that process is like, what the benefits for that are, and all the different events and benefits that we offer that honestly sometimes aren't used to the full potential of our accredited businesses. So we like to this is our piece is trying to improve our communication of them. And that way people are more aware of all of the things that they have available to them. So um, to start us off, I want to start with what is the vision of VVB? And that is, it's an, we envision an ethical marketplace where buyers and sellers trust each other. That's the, trust is the foundation of BBB. Um, it was started, and we'll talk about this probably a little bit more in the future, but it was started by um, the advertising club many years back um, to where they saw that in the marketplace, there wasn't a lot of uh, a trust between buyers and sellers, and there wasn't really a place that was pushing forward the improving that. So that is why BBB was founded to be an unbiased place that was really just advocating for trustworthy businesses and helping give them a platform that way there was more trust within consumers as well. So our mission is to be that leader in advancing the marketplace trust. And there's a lot of different ways we do that. Uh, one is to set the standards. I think trust is a really hard place or hard thing to measure. And BBB has been around now for over 100 years to where they've done a pretty good job of knowing what things to look for and how that can be measured. Um, and we also do this by encouraging and supporting the best practices and educating consumers and businesses. I think this is a pretty big one, specifically with consumers. They often call and ask about what things to look for, what's, whether or not something is a scam, or even with our relationships with different media organizations in Oklahoma, they're always wanting to know about the best practices and uh, what to watch out for when holiday shopping or when tax season comes up. And uh, people really look at BBB for that information and what it is that makes a business trustworthy or not trustworthy in the marketplace. We also do this by calling out and addressing substandard marketplace behavior. This is really through our complaints processes that is public on business profiles. We also release press releases when we see patterns of different scams. We have our scam tracker, popular ones that we've seen the past couple of years are puppy scams different things like that. We always do the work to try and make consumers as much aware as possible, as much as we can on our half um, of letting people know what's going on in the marketplace. And we also try to celebrate the role models that we do have, which are so much, many here in the Oklahoma community. Uh, I feel like I had a recent conversation with an owner of a brewery. We're just talking about how big community is in Oklahoma and how business, it, I, I really do feel like Oklahoma does a good job of embracing community over competition. And one of the ways we try to participate in that is celebrating all of the ro role models that we do know and have and get, giving them a platform and highlighting them. We have awards that we give out throughout the year. We have our um, our annual BBB Torch Award. This is a national award and we do our local level and then they can, if they get the BBB Torch Award, businesses can go on to participate regionally and then nationally. And that's one of the ways we recognize them. We also give awards to women in business at our, uh, at our annual Revere and Revel conference, which I'll be talking about a little bit more in the future, but there's a lot of different ways in which we try to, uh, really prioritize celebrating the role models that we see in our community. And then uh, finally, one of the ways we try to live out our mission is creating that community of trustworthy businesses and charities. We, whether, really this main way we do this is through different events and letting them meet one another. We, have, we try to work hard and build relationships with our accredited businesses, but we also want them to create relationships with one another and take advantage of the community 
and uh, we have B2B discount program where uh, businesses can offer discounts from their business exclusively to other accredited businesses that if you are accredited, you would be able to see on your business profile. We also do multiple networking events throughout the year that are open to everyone. It's for businesses to come in and meet one another and connect and hopefully um, help one another in helping their businesses be successful. Okay, and let's see a little bit about who we are as an organization. So uh, BBB had, was founded in 1912, so over 100 years ago, and the BBB in Central Oklahoma, our office here in OKC, was founded in 1930, so we're headed toward that 100-year mark as well soon. And so it's been around for quite a while, and we serve 54 counties in Western Oklahoma. Um, so it's all of that, uh, every, all of the blue that you can see in the map there. It's really the central and Western part of the state as well as the Southern corner. So it's a big chunk of a lot of different counties. And we try our very best to reach out to all of those and serve all of those different counties well. Okay. And like I had said earlier that one of the ways we live out our mission is to set the standards. And we really learned throughout the past several years on how it is that we can best measure trust. And that is our standards for trust. The first one is to build, build trust. We wanna make sure that all of our businesses that are a part of our organiza organization, that they also value trust and that this is a one of the principles that they live by. And the second one is that the businesses advertise honestly. Since so much of our history is founded pretty deeply by uh, the advertising club, this is one that may, just makes the best sense. And for consumers, it's pretty important that those first impressions that they're receiving from businesses through advertising on their websites or in public media, that it is something honest and that they can trust. And the third one is telling the truth pretty tied into advertising, honestly. And the fourth one is to be transparent. And some of the ways we do this is making sure that businesses are op openly identify the nature of their business, the different kinds of services that they offer, where they're located, the ownership of the business, that they disclose any policies, guarantees, or procedures that uh, are necessary for customers to make the decision or whether or not to give them their business. And our fifth one is that businesses honor promises, uh, including written and verbal representation. I, this is another big one with consumers, but depending on the industry as well. Um, we want to make sure that all of the businesses that are part of our community who are accredited do by honor all of the promises that, that they make to their consumers, to their clients. The sixth one is that they are responsive. Uh, more and more day as we become more and more digital, it's important to everyone in the marketplace that they receive good customer service and that businesses are responsive uh, quickly, professionally, and in good faith. The seventh one is safeguard privacy. This is another one that is becoming more and more important as we become more and more digital and um, is more prevalent. A big one of the most popular type of scams that we see are online scams. And so whenever we uh, consumers come to us trying to know whether a website is legitimate or not, we always tell them different things they can look for, including that a website is has a, a privacy policy and that it is safe for them to give them their information. So we look for that all of the businesses that are part of us and do any kind of online transactions that they do their best to take care of the privacy of their consumers. And then the eighth one is embody integrity, which just like the first one is a bit more general that we want to make sure that at the end of the, that through all of the different business dealings that they do, that they're working with integrity. 
Okay, so now we're gonna get into a bit more details about the different services that BBB provides. So to start off, we provide a lot of information on businesses and charities. So this we do through our BBB website, which is I believe one of the most popular services that BBB offers. We offer free business profiles for all businesses to include contact information, put pictures on there for them to do customer reviews and information for them to put like highlight their business more and also for consumers to have available if they're trying to research research a business and if that business doesn't have a website on their own or if they're trying to find a more unbiased opinion they can go to bbb.org and we also do multiple art articles and blog posts throughout the years depending of different subjects that we see are prevalent in the business community that we want to make businesses aware of or consumers aware of whether that be like I said earlier, tax season is a popular one that we're getting started to talk about here in the coming months, uh, different things that and tips that we like to give businesses during that season. And then the next one, we offer alternative dispute resolution. Uh, just like the first one, this is another very popular and common service that BBB provides. We like to offer, we offer free dispute resolution for uh, businesses are trying to resolve a complaint and try to avoid court action. We offer that dispute resolution to try and resolve it uh, through us as a third party. And we also do advertising reviews throughout the year. We regularly monitor advertisements on both accredited and non-accredited businesses and make sure that they are truthful and if the we have that code of advertising that is linked there, which by the way, I will be providing this presentation to all of our attendees uh, and registrants. So you will have that available, but the code of advertising is separate from our standards of trust. And it goes more in detail specifically on the advertising side of our organization, such as warranties, um, being uh, public about a license, different things like that. So if any of the code is ever broken or we uh, want more detail or context about something, we will reach out to businesses for an advertising review throughout the year. We also, aside from that, offer networking and business training workshops. So uh, in the next slide, I'll go more in detail, but we but without the last couple of years, BBB has more than doubled the different events we do throughout the year. And we just really like to emphasize or grow the different services that we offer to our accredited businesses. And we saw that one of the big things that our businesses were wanting when asking was that they wanted more networking opportunities. So this is a bigger thing that we continue to focus more and more so within the uh, last couple months and years. We offer consumer tips, like I said previously, through articles and blogs and throughout our website, as well as press releases uh, with the media. We have a scam tracker, which is very popular with the public, where consumers can either report a scam for themselves and we review it before we post it on there. And consumers can also go on there to search a name if they're is, working with a business they've never heard of or have had some activity or experience with them that they might be suspicious of before they fully commit to them. So some of the events that BBB has been doing, uh, all four of these that are listed are actually new within the past two, three years. So, and we've really loved them and continue, want to continue growing them. The first one is our BYO BBB happy hour. And this is an event we do every quarter. Our first one's actually coming up on February 9th. It's when we're gonna launch starting back up our in-person events, um, if all goes well. And we partner with a different local brewery each time so that we can support a local business. And it is an opportunity as requested by our businesses for them to network and connect with one another. This is a really fun one that from what we've done in the past that I've been able to attend. It's always a lot of fun and it gets, it draws a good crowd and just businesses unwinding after the work hours. Um, we ha always have it four to seven come and go. So if you're available February 9th, I believe that is a Wednesday, please come and join us. We'll be, um, advertising it more on our socials if you want to get more information on that in the future. 
We also have our big blue bash event. This we've been doing for about maybe four or five years now. Uh, we've been doing it for multiple years and it is by far a favorite with our accredited businesses. We do it every summer, typically in the month of May. This year, it will be in May as well. And it is a, a bash, just like it is in the, in the name. It is a bash that we host at our offices in our parking lot and indoors, we have food trucks come, we have live music, and it is an opportunity for our businesses to just come meet one another. It is our, the purpose of our event is to, uh, it was founded as an appreciation event for our businesses and kind of our thank you throughout the year for all of their support and for continuing to uphold our standards of trust. And it has grown since then to also be open to the public if they would like to come. And um, we also have all our staff there in case they wanna have ask any questions while they're there. But really it's more of a relaxing time for businesses to connect with one another and enjoy their successes of the year. The next one is our Ambassador Coffee Networking Series. We have this every month. And uh, like I said previously, businesses that had expressed that they wanted more networking opportunities, especially in different areas, because we are centered in uh, downtown OKC, we wanted to create this so that we could slowly uh, expand our events to more of out, outside Oklahoma City and Metro Oklahoma. This is rather new, so we're still growing. We currently have three locations, one in Edmond, one in Moore, and one in Norman. And we have different ambassadors at each location so that businesses can go to whatever is closest and more, most convenient to them. And um, our next one, if you'd like to attend, I believe is February 16th. It, it always takes place the third Wednesday of the month at 9 a.m. If you'd like more information, feel free to reach out to me. And that way you can get connected to one of our Ambassador Coffee locations. And then the final event that I wanted to highlight is our Revere and Revel Conference. We just started this one last year for the first time. And uh, we it's near and dear to all of us. And this is our annual women's conference. We started it because working with different businesses so closely throughout the year, we saw that a lot of our uh, supporters and a lot of the people that we worked with a lot closely were women, women in business. And we wanted to create this specific event to highlight them and really appreciate and honor all of the work that they're doing in the business community. So this Revere and Revel conference is our fall event this year. I believe it is scheduled for towards the end of October. Although we have more and more information on that in the coming weeks and months. But if you would like to attend that this year, it was a huge success and so much fun to be, uh, be a part of. And I'd love to share more information about that with you. So these next two slides, I'm not gonna read through them, but it's just some quotes that we put in of what current accredited businesses are saying. Okay, so what does accreditation mean to consumers? This was a survey that was done by National BBB in 2014-15 to learn a little bit about what accredita accreditation meant to our consumers. And 84% said they were familiar with BBB ratings or consumers who are familiar with BBB ratings are more likely to purchase if a business has a high BBB letter grade. And closely up to that 83%, of consumers who are familiar with BBB are more likely to purchase when a business displays their BBB accreditation seal, which is this seal that we see on this corner over here. And a bit more recently, uh, the Council of BBB did a survey in 2018 about what are the different reasons that motivate our businesses to join BBB. 84% thought their biggest motivator was that it builds trust with customers. 83% said that it increases credibility of their business. And 69% shows that it cares about their consumers and customers. A few other honorable mentions there on the side is that it adds prestige to their business and that supports BBB's mission of advancing marketplace trust. 
So the seal that was mentioned earlier is this one on the side. We have vertical and horizontal ones. And what that seal symbolizes to our buyers is it symbolizes quality and honesty, good business standing, and it has the approval of BBB in that in the very end that it is a reliable business. 83 of the co consumers that are familiar with the seal, like I said, are more likely to trust a business. And I, although we have established the way we measure trust throughout the several years, it can be hard for consumers that doesn't have those hundreds of years of experience of measuring trust. So this seal can, is their sign that that work has been done for them and that a business has been vetted and that they have all of the different um, think, standards of trust we had set earlier and that they are accredited. We have a, a dynamic seal. Since we've become a more digital uh, world, we created a dynamic version of our seal several years ago. And that way it can be more trustworthy. And it is just like that picture shows when you have, when you have, yes. I'm sorry, do we have a question? Okay, if not, I will continue on. Um, so when you hover over the seal on a website, it changes to that screen where it says what the BBB letter grade is. It shows when they started being accredited, what today's date is as well. And then you can click it and it sends the uh, consumer directly to their business profile. And this is because we saw that a lot of businesses uh, were just downloading an image on Google image and putting it on their websites when they were not actually a part of BBB. We truly do a lot of hard work throughout the year to make prevent that. Aside from having our dynamic seal, we do do logo violations throughout the year, monitor, monitoring websites, um, the system kind of, I don't even know how it works, but somehow we have a system that can kind of detect that in websites and flags them and sends them to us. That way we can review and make sure it, it is uh, properly and correctly being used. And aside from being able to use it on our websites, accredited businesses can also use the seal really anywhere they would like. As being accredited, they have full rights to our logo and they can use it anywhere that they put their name, whether that be business cards, billboards, a popular one here on the next one is uh, vehicle map magnets, industries that have vehicles, love these and get some more every year. Um, that way, as they're traveling, it's visible and can be over time associated their name with being a trustworthy business. So a couple of frequently asked questions. We're about to go to Q&A if you guys have any questions, but some popular ones I wanted to touch on is that how can a company have an A plus rating when there are hundreds of complaints against them? And before I answer that one, I'd actually rather answer that second one first to kind of give background first on what are the ratings. So BB grades businesses from A to F, and this is visible on our website with the um, grade is for every business as well as, as it shows on their dynamic seal if they put that on their website and um, we have different metrics that measure uh, measures a business some of which are whether a business is licensed or not if they require a license and whether or not they're in good standing with the secretary of state if they're advertising as an llc or a corporation um, whether or not they have a pattern of complaints, um, if they have a pattern of bad customer reviews, we um, look into uh, if they've had any advertising reviews or um, questionable advertising that's within the past three years on their website or in the media, whether they have any court cases against them, multiple different things that we do look at annually every single year when we renew our accredited businesses um, before they're approved. And that is how we grade businesses. And so a popular question that people have is, why does a company with an A plus rating have hundreds of complaints of them with them? And we consider, like it says there, 16 factors for the rating, some of which I mentioned, but one of the things that's also considered is the size of the business. 
For example, if a business is a national company that has um, thousands of employees and over a million dollars a year in revenue, then they are likely going to have more than 100 complaints throughout the year because of the large amount of business that they do and the large amount of customers that they have throughout the year. So if another company has a handful of employees and a smaller fraction of customers during the year, then if they have 10 complaints against them, then that is a bit more concerning to us than if a huge corporation has 100 because of the different size. So uh, the, it's more mathematical in the algorithm that grades businesses as far as what is the size and of the business and how many complaints needs to be against that size before it is a concern and as far as the size difference between the two. And I have a link there that has other more frequently asked questions. If you guys like to look at it further later on when I send out the presentation. But I do want to open it up and have a chance for you guys to introduce yourself. Let me know a little bit about what business uh, you're here with if you've joined us. And if you have any questions for me that you'd like to know more about BBB, our events that I mentioned, or anything else. So does anyone have any questions? And if not, that's totally okay. No pressure. It just hopefully means I did a really good job answering all the questions that you had. But uh, finally, I kind of just want to say thank you. Thank you for joining us here this morning to our virtual presentation that we do every month. And uh, whether or not you're a new AB, if you're a new AB, I want to say welcome. We're so happy to have you join our community. And if you're just interested in getting more connected or learn a little bit more about BBB, um, glad you joined this one. It's a really good one to start to have some background on BBB. I encourage you to attend our Ambassador Coffee events next. So if you want more information on that or any of our other events, contact me or any of our staff right on this screen I have my direct line as well as my email and that line's always open if you want to reach out to me for more information I love connecting people but otherwise thank you guys for joining we did pretty good time it is 10 30 so I will go ahead and let you guys go and uh, get started with the rest of your day thank you guys you have a good one